Welcome back to Michiana Main Lines. Today we're going to take a look at the Notre Dame and Western Railroad, Notre Dame's Railroad. So we'll get started here and uh, look at some of the history first. It was built in 1902 from a connection with the Michigan Central, which ran between uh, Niles and South Bend, Indiana. There was a lot more tracks and uh, storage tracks at one time uh, than in final years. Uh, early on and in the past, uh, it hauled livestock and ice to the uh, ice house and also other uh, general freight. Uh, hosted football fan passenger trains until 1962. There was uh, approximately six storage tracks uh, for passenger trains, and even uh, military trains were uh, on the property uh, during World War II. Uh, just coal was pretty much the uh, commodity in the uh, 80s and into the 90s until uh, rail service directly to the university ended and in uh, 2012 the track was removed and the uh, locomotive was donated to the uh, Hoosier Valley Railroad Museum. Just wanted to bring up here out of the uh, publication online a voice of Moreau, uh, brother uh, Romeo Thomas Melly CSE. He was a very instrumental figure, uh, being the uh, director of utilities for uh, 41 years. And as a part of that, he was directly involved with the operation of the railroad. And he was kind of instrumental in the whole idea of the uh, generation of electric power for the university, which uh, saved uh, tons of money over the years. So that's something you can readily find online if you want to read more about that, the uh, Voice of Moreau, Spirit of Holy Cross. Here's kind of an overview map just to get our bearings straight over here. If you watch these videos before, this is kind of a uh, map that comes up a lot looking at the general South Bend, Mishawaka area. Here we have the uh, main Conrail main line east-west through South Bend and up north the uh, Notre Dame campus. Uh, the red line here to the right is the uh, Notre Dame and Western, which ran off of this uh, ex-Michigan Central and uh, ran eastward, did a loop through the uh, coal pile, and then came into their uh, power plant area. Of course, this dash line up to Niles was the ex-Michigan uh, Central, which was uh, pretty much out of service by the 80s. We're going to kind of focus on the late 80, early 90 period when Conrail still operated uh, this line and coal was uh, delivered directly into the university. Uh, to the left here you see another red line that was the uh, St. Mary's uh, coal spur which was kind of a, a mirror image of the Notre Dame. We'll be uh, doing a short video separately on that which we'll probably be posting in the uh, next couple of days. Here's a, a more detailed map now of the uh, Notre Dame line. Again, here we see the uh, Michigan Central to the left. Uh, the uh, line came around a broad curve and then traveled uh, eastward into the university. Big loop where it crossed uh, Douglas Road, the old Douglas Road alignment twice. And the uh, coal pile, there was a uh, kind of a passing siding there. And then the uh, track came uh, down straight south into the uh, power plant area. Here's another good uh, map, uh, currently a satellite overview map, which kind of shows this area well. Again, we have uh, 31 running uh, north and south. Here we still see uh, a good visual evidence of that broad curve uh, of the line as it came uh, and crossed 31 and went eastward. This is now just a kind of a, a hiking uh, type of a trail here. Uh, Douglas Road was uh, uh, relocated uh, farther up, up north uh, now, but at that time it, it ran right parallel to the uh, track. Then we see where the track crossed Douglas for the first time, came through the coal pile and did the uh, big loop, crossed the Douglas for the second time here, and then came down into the uh, power plant area where the uh, coal was unloaded for uh, burning for the electric generation. This is a look at the uh, Conrail uh, ZTS map from 1989 showing a detail uh, of the area. Uh, these maps were used by Conrail to uh, familiarize crews with the layout of uh, track work for customers where cars needed to be spotted and, and such. 
uh, again here we see the loop where it came off of the uh, what was then called the uh, Niles Industrial uh, track curved and came uh, across uh, Michigan US 31 ran parallel to Douglas uh, this area here where it ran straight alongside Douglas is where the uh, uh, interchange point was between Notre Dame and Western and Conrail. That's where the uh, loaded cars and empties were, were uh, uh, left for pickup. Here in the line crossed Douglas first time, came through the pole, a coal pile, crossed Douglas again, and then came down into the power plant. You see here three loading dock spaces. That's where uh, there was provision for uh, boxcar uh, unloading. Uh, not sure that was done at all or very much already in the 80s or 90s period. It was pretty much uh, coal at that time. Here's an old uh, picture from Notre Dame archives on the internet. This was the uh, kind of the golden spike ceremony in the early 1900s when the uh, line was uh, first uh, uh, put into service or just before. Here's a picture now looking at the old uh, Michigan Central, looking north uh, towards Niles. This was that broad curve here to the right, uh, heading toward 31 and uh, the university. They were pulling a bunch of hoppers out of the uh, interchange point and getting ready to tie on to some hoppers uh, back here that were taken from uh, St. Mary's. And then this was going to be uh, hauled back to South Bend. Here's a shot of the uh, Conrail switch engine crossing uh, 31 at Douglas. Here you see Douglas Road over to the left, uh, which is gone now. This uh, is actually a still shot from a video that's on this uh, channel called Notre Dame Conrail Coal Train Part 2. So if you want to see more of the actual video of this uh, operation here, you can uh, check that out there. But this was a uh, bunch of empties that were uh, going to be pulled across and then uh, brought back to South Bend. On this particular day, no uh, new coal was uh, brought in. It was just a pickup of empties from uh, Notre Dame and St. Mary's. Here we see another shot now uh, crossing 31 Conrail and their, their uh, transfer caboose switch engine this time. Uh, the power varied uh, during this period of the 80s and 90s depending upon what the uh, local job was assigned. Sometimes it was a switch engine, sometimes it was a uh, larger uh, uh, road diesel. Here's another shot, same location, Douglas and 31 of the uh, switcher and caboose. Now we kind of head farther eastward onto the Notre Dame and Western track. This was the Notre Dame locomotive crossing uh, Douglas at the first crossing. This was a hot summer day, you can tell from the uh, shiny melting tar on the uh, roadway. Uh, they had just uh, shoved a uh, cut of uh, empty cars over to the interchange point along uh, Douglas Road and then were returning back to the uh, powerhouse area. Here's a good look at the uh, loop that went around the coal pile. This was uh, looking just north of uh, Douglas uh, Road where the uh, line crossed for the second time, maneuvering a, a long cut of uh, hopper cars. Again, another shot, same location, same locomotive. Kind of a look at what that track work uh, looked like back then. I think this was probably like the uh, mid or late 80s. Another good close-up of the uh, Notre Dame locomotive, Notre Dame and Western. We'll talk a little bit more about it later. Here's a good overview of what that coal pile uh, looked like. Again, here you see Douglas Road for reference running east and west. Here's where it crossed Douglas Road first on the uh, western side. Came through the uh, big coal pile, then uh, crossed Douglas for the second time. And this was the uh, powerhouse area where coal was dumped uh, for the uh, electric power generation. And there were uh, several tracks here. Here we have a uh, shot courtesy of Monon.org. We'll talk a little bit more about their website later. 
but this was a shot of the uh, coal pile area, the western side, showing that second track. This is where uh, the coal was offloaded by the uh, uh, cranes, and then the coal would be trucked into the powerhouse as needed with uh, coal hoppers that Notre Dame uh, had on property. Here's a good look at the powerhouse. This is uh, Douglas Road Second Crossing. You see the two main lines going in there, and there also was a uh, third siding on the right-hand side. You see the two uh, railroad cranes that were used for uh, coal uh, unloading, and you see the powerhouse entrance back here where uh, coals were taken in for dumping. Another close-up look, again, courtesy of Monon.org, of the uh, powerhouse area. Another look again to the left, you see a uh, hopper car, one of Notre Dame's hopper cars, and you can barely see, but the locomotive is coupled right in front of it. And uh, these were the cars that were used to shuttle the coal from the pile into the powerhouse. That's a uh, Tom Burke photo. Here's a closer look at that uh, kind of warehouse loading area. If you remember off of the uh, ZTS map, the uh, three loading dock uh, locations, well, we see those three locations right here where boxcars could be uh, left uh, and spotted for unloading. Here's another look uh, from the other direction again, closer look at uh, one of those uh, cranes as well as the locomotive and hopper car. Another uh, hopper car uh, of, of uh, Notre Dame's used for unloading purposes over to the left. Here's an old photo, an old Notre Dame internet photo. This is probably going many years back. Some of the building arrangement as well as the way things were done changed over the years. But this is uh, coal being unloaded kind of out in the open uh, now. But a uh, little bit of a uh, historical uh, look at how it how it used to be. Here's some uh, detailed information on the locomotive, the Porter 65 tonner, which is now at the uh, Hoosier Valley Railroad Museum. We'll talk a little bit more about them later. But uh, they took possession of that unit in November of 2013. According to this, they believe it used to be possibly used by the U.S. Navy before uh, coming to Notre Dame. But it is being uh, uh, worked on and repainted uh, down at the museum and, and eventually may be used to pull their uh, excursion uh, trains. So we'll talk a little bit about that uh, later on. Here's a look of the uh, locomotive in transit uh, to the uh, museum uh, by truck. This was back in uh, 2013. And here's a look uh, inside the museum once they took possession of the locomotive when it was uh, awaiting its evaluation and uh, uh, refurb. Here's a uh, Notre Dame magazine. If you're interested in uh, learning any more about the Notre Dame and Western, this was a pretty good uh, informative article that was in the Notre Dame magazine summer of 2017. Again, this is readily available on the internet, written by Tom Burke, which uh, uh, g gives some good information, just an overview of the uh, Notre Dame and Western. As mentioned earlier, the Notre Dame and Western locomotive is now at the uh, Hoosier Valley uh, Railroad Museum in North Judson, Indiana. If you'd like more pictures and information on that, check out their website at hoosiervalley.org. Also, it's very worth a visit down there if you've never been, and even if you have been but it's been a while, uh, make another visit because uh, a lot is going on. They're, they're doing a wonderful job, and there's train rides you can take, so uh, uh, check out that website for uh, information on times of uh, train rides and also just their uh, general uh, uh, hours of uh, operation in general. Also check out the uh, monon.org uh, website if you want more pictures and more information, not only on the Notre Dame and Western, but just the uh, local rail scene in, in general. So 
uh, anyway I hope you enjoyed this uh, as I said earlier there will be a short video on the uh, St. Mary's Spur uh, going up here shortly so until next time be safe rail fanning and uh, we'll see you later